Today we have a special guest, Chelsea Swindle with She Sew Seams. Hey everybody! She's going to show us how to make a t-shirt. I can't wait to show you this t-shirt. It's really easy and really fun. Let's get started! I'm making this one for my son. He's a size 3T and this pattern is available on their website in both adult and child sizes. So go and get you one. There's five main pieces to this pattern. We've got a front piece, a back piece, two sleeves, and then you've got your neckband. I've already cut the pieces out and I want to give you just a quick tip before we jump into this project. When you start sewing a front and a back and sleeves and you get everything sort of in the mix, sometimes it's hard to tell the difference between the front piece and the back piece. My little hack for this is I take just a little wonder clip and I pin it right to the middle center of my front piece. The reason I do that is because I'm not going to be sewing in this middle section at all during the project, but it's a quick and easy way for me to remember which is the front and which is the back of my shirt. If you really want to know the difference, the quick and easy way to tell is usually on the front of a t-shirt the neck is going to scoop a little bit and on the back of a t-shirt it's going to be a little bit higher. But if that's something that's a little difficult for you to keep track of and you're just beginning sewing, just clip the front and then you don't have to worry about it anymore. The first step of this project is we're going to take our front piece and our back piece at the shoulder seams and I'm just going to clip them with wonder clips. I prefer to use wonder clips when I'm sewing on my serger because if you cut through a pin with your knives and your needles, first of all it could break your knives and your needles, but second it could be dangerous if that comes up into your eye or in your face. So I recommend that you stick with clips when you're sewing on a serger. Just a quick note, I'm going to be doing this entire project on my serger and my cover stitch machine, but if you don't have those items in your sewing space, it's no problem. You can do this entire project using a zigzag stitch on your regular sewing machine. Just make sure that you use a ballpoint needle when you're sewing knits. So I'm going to load my fabric right into my serger. I'm using a 5 8 inch seam allowance on this project. I'm going to sew right across these shoulder seams. As you can see, we're now connected right at the shoulder seams. So the next step is we're going to move on to our sleeves. So we're going to be putting a little memory hem into each of our sleeves. And what that is, is we're going to fold the fabric up with the length of our seam allowance, which for this project is one half of an inch. And then you're just going to lightly press it. So for knit fabrics, especially this double brush poly that I'm using, I keep my iron at a very low setting. It really does the job even without a whole lot of heat. So again, we're going to use the half inch measurement and I just make sure that it's marked the whole way across. You can finger press this type of fabric down pretty well or just leave this on the end so that you know that it's marked well. Take your iron and just lightly press that little section. And that's creating a memory in the fabric so it will be folded at an accurate measurement all the way across when we go to our cover stitch machine, which is the next step of the project. So when you cover stitch, you're actually going to be doing it sort of on the blind, which makes it just a little bit interesting when you're first learning how to do it. So the way that that memory hem is going to come in handy here is I've got that marked very well on this side of the fabric. And when I cover stitch it, I'm actually going to be cover stitching it from the right side of the fabric. When a cover stitch goes into a garment, the top side is going to be just usually two to three parallel lines, which is the pretty side. And then the back side is going to be where you have sort of the knit look of your thread. I've got this all loaded up and ready to go, so let's take off and see how it goes. Just make sure you take your time when you're cover stitching, serging, really any type of sewing. You need to take your time. Watch your measurements. Keep an eyeball on where your fabric is lining up on your presser foot so that you have a nice even hem going in the whole way across. So as you can see, we've got a beautiful little three line cover stitch on the front side and then it caught my hem on the back side and it looks nice and neat. So we're just going to repeat that for sleeve number two. Make sure when you're cover stitching that you don't pull on your fabric because that will create bubbling along your hem. Just let your feed dogs and your machine do the work for you. All right, it's time to attach the sleeve to the shirt. Now, the way that I like to do this, if you are just beginning sewing and its sleeves make you feel a little nervous because if you look at this, it doesn't look like it's gonna fit, right? So the way that I like to think through this is lay your sleeve out with the garment the way that it's going to look when the garment is sewn. Right now, you can see like if these were attached, this would be a sleeve on a shirt. So what I'm gonna do is lay this out. I marked my center point and I'm gonna match that up just by turning it this way 
onto my garment. And that's my starting point. I'm going to start by clipping right in that spot. The next step is to just work your way down one side and then work your way down the other side with your clips. You'll be surprised, it's almost magic how the sleeve fits right into that armhole. So I've got one side done and now I'm gonna work down the other side. Once you have these matched up, it's time to serge that seam. So just pick up your piece and you're gonna start at one end and load it into your serger and just go ahead and use the same seam allowance that you've been using for the project. Okay, we've got one sleeve attached. Now it's time to sew our other sleeve. We've got our sleeves attached to our garment now. The next step is to sew your side seams and your underarm seams. So to do that, we're gonna start by matching up the edges of our sleeves using Wonder Clips again. And we're gonna nest our seams at this point. What that means is we're going to put one seam going this way and one seam going the opposite direction. It helps the fabric to lay flat right into the groove of the seam below it. The next step is to sew down our side seams. Now listen up, because this can be a little tricky. When you stack these two sleeves together that have the memory hem already built into them, that's a lot of fabric to try and keep matched up. So the way that I like to begin this serve is by lifting my presser foot, lifting my knives and my needles, and sliding this section in as far as I possibly can to make sure that those two edges stay even. Another quick tip for this is to clip it on the outside of your sleeve. That will help keep those fabrics lined up as you start to sew. When you get to those nested seams, make sure you realign things and hold on to that seam outside of your presser foot as it goes through just to keep things nice and steady. At the corner, you'll turn just a little bit and then keep going. Here's a quick tip for when you finish a serged seam, but it's like an underarm seam where it could be visible to the world. We wanna finish that thread out so that it doesn't come unraveled and so that it doesn't stick out with its little threads once you cut it. So what I like to do is take an embroidery needle with a large eye and I load my thread into the needle and all I'm gonna do is sew it right back into the serged threads. Then you're just gonna trim it down, and when you turn it out, you'll see that everything matches up beautifully and you have no threads flying away at the seam. As you can see, we've got our sleeves on. Now it's time to attach our neckband. At this point, you're gonna to wanna to turn your shirt right side out and go ahead and pick up the neckband piece that you cut when you first cut your pattern. The first step of this is we need to create a circle because right now it's just a long piece of fabric. So what I'm gonna do is just sew a quick seam right across this short end and that's gonna create a circle for me. Our next step is we're going to attach our neckband to our shirt. And to do this, we need to talk about quarter points. So what is a quarter point exactly? Well, basically all we're doing is we're going to fold the neckband in half so the wrong sides are touching and the right side is facing out. And I'm gonna start where my seam is and just let it hang from my finger. And that's gonna tell me exactly where my first quarter point is going. And I'm gonna mark it with a clip. Let that hang from your finger and pull down on it and that's going to give you your second quarter point. After that, hang it from your finger again from this middle part. Make sure your fabrics are even and match up your two clips. This is going to be your third quarter point. And then easy peasy, your last quarter point is right at the bottom. Why do we do this? This circle that makes up my shirt neck band is actually bigger than the circle that makes up my neck band that I'm attaching. What that means is when I attach my neck band, I'm going to have to stretch it a little bit to make it fit the shirt. And what that creates is a bit of a cinch right around your collar so that it pulls in like a shirt should. What we also need to do then is mark our quarter points on our shirt. I like to use my shoulder seams to match up first, and that'll tell me where my two quarter points on the front and back are. 
Then I'm gonna match my front and back clips together and clip it on the sides. Now, this is not going to be where your shoulder seam is usually, so don't just assume that your shoulder seam is going to make up a quarter point, because that will not evenly distribute your stretch across the whole neckline. Once we've got the quarter points marked on our shirt and our neckband, all we have to do is match them up. So this is when that clip in the front comes in really handy because I know exactly where the front of my shirt is. I'm gonna pick it up by the back clip. This is my back of my shirt and I'm going to match that with the seam that makes up the back of my neckband. So we're gonna match those two clips up, remove one clip, and then clip it all together with one clip. Work your way around the neckband and do that for the other three quarter points. Now that we've got our quarter points all marked and all connected, it's time to serge that neckband. Make sure you're following your seam allowance that was set for the project, and the one thing I need you to do when you do this is commit to your measurement. So when you're sewing around a neckband, don't change it up. Make sure your eye is straight on that lined up part and that you stick with it the whole way around. Otherwise, you'll have a neckband that has a narrow part and then a wide part, and it can just look like a mess. So make sure you commit to your measurement. I know I said earlier not to pull on your knits, but in this case, we have to pull on that neckband just a little bit to make sure that it's fitting within each quarter point. And remember that we mark our quarter points because that's going to evenly distribute the stretch between each of those clips so that we have a nice, even and smooth neckband all the way around our shirt. Remember at this part, when you have a nice long tail from your serged threads that you wanna sew those back in using my embroidery needle method. You just load it into the embroidery needle and pull your threads through and then sew them back into your serged stitches, just like that. Let's see how this neckband turned out. Did I commit to my measurement? This is looking pretty good. I think it's turning out cute. We're down to our last step, y'all. We just have to hem the bottom. So let's take it over to the ironing board and I'll show you how to do that. I'm gonna use my iron to press this hem up one half of an inch all the way around, and then we'll take it back to our cover stitch machine, run it through, and then we will be done. You wanna make sure that when you're pressing that you're using an even measurement all the way around your garment. Because remember, when you go to cover stitch this, you're gonna be cover stitching it from the right side of your fabric, which means that you won't be able to see if your measurements are perfect or not, which could create kind of a wonky looking hem. That's when these seam gauges come in so handy. They have every measurement that you could think of and it tells you exactly where it falls on the gauge. I love this tool in my sewing room. Now that our seam is pressed up nice and neat, let's cover stitch. Now I'm just gonna run a quick cover stitch around the edge of my garment. And remember, commit to your measurement. If your fabric is running right along the edge of your presser foot for this step, let it do that for the whole way around so it's nice and even. The last step is to just trim any little threads that may be sticking out from anywhere in your project. And also make sure that you go back through and double check that all of your seams were caught perfectly with the machines that you were using and that you have cleaned up any little loose strays that are flying around. Ready for the big reveal? There you have it, it's a t-shirt. I think this is gonna look really cute on my son. I can't wait for him to try it on.